Hey guys, welcome to Tide TV. My name is Tide, and since this weekend was the Draenor Dungeon Weekend, me and a couple buddies went around and did a whole bunch of other old school dungeons, and I wanted to do a top 6 list of my favorite dungeons. Now the only rule is that I can only use one dungeon per expansion pack, including vanilla. So let's go ahead and take a look. So for number 6, I picked Shadowpan Monastery from Mist of Pandaria. Now, the reason I picked this as my number 6 is because this dungeon is very long. It has a lot of trash before you can actually get to the 4 bosses. I think this dungeon is really cool because it's basically Pandarians training themselves to fight against the in Shaw invasion. Um, and then during the midst of all this, they themselves become corrupted by the Shaw. This dungeon is really cool because it has like the whole um, dojo in it and it has the uh, the part where you fight like all the, the underlings that are still being trained, like the white belts, and then you fight like the two elite people, which is really cool. And I don't know if... He the actual master is taken over himself, but he wants us to prove to him that we're strong and we fight him, beat him, um, and then we can get up to Terran Zoo at the end, who was actually a somewhat difficult boss fight regardless of how you did it, um, whether it was normal or heroic, he was actually pretty difficult. I love that you have to fight Terran Zoo, which is a huge character in the turning point of Mists of Pandaria against Garrosh Hellscream. So it was really cool that we actually got to first hand fight one of the biggest, most prominent pan pandas in the in the expansion. Tempest Keep was just a setback. My number 5 is going to go to Magister's Terrace, which was one of the coolest dungeons that came out of BC in my opinion. We got to see the entire Isle of Quildenos, the first main chunk of content we get to see was the Magister's Terrace along with all the dailies, which are kind of cool. My favorite part about this dungeon, regardless of the bosses and the mobs you have to fight, is Kael'thas at the end. Because his boss fight is actually pretty cool, like, you have to float around and stuff like that, although it doesn't really last long enough to fully experience it, at least not anymore, not in any, other, not in any way you can do it anymore. Um, the fight itself was really cool. The fact that you get to see Kael'thas surviving the Tempest Keep, you even see him missing his one Ardent Sphere because you took it for you know, that quest. You see the big gem stabbed inside of his chest that keeps him alive, and he doesn't really pose much of a threat, he just basically is in there to tell you that regardless we failed, and yet uh, he, he's the one who kind of failed. Kel'thas is one of my favorite lore characters, so seeing him in Tempest Keep as a badass and then seeing him like at least trying to fight back, although he's already lost was kind of cool. Um, it was kind of sad to, really sad to see a character that was originally good kind of fall prey to being a bad guy. I'm not even sure why he became a bad guy. I think Blizzard just wanted more bad guys. But either way, rip Kael'thas and rip Magister's Terrace. For my number four, I'm going to give it to the three dungeons that came out for the Dragon Soul patch in Cataclysm. However, more specifically, End Time. So, I really enjoyed End Time because we actually get to see everybody failed and our our army, the whole of our people, fell and we lost. And we get to fight these echoes that are left behind by Tyrande, Jaina, Sylvanas, and Bane. No one really cares too much about Bane. And then we get to fight uh, Murozond, who is essentially Norse Domu when he was tricked by the old gods and it's insane we get to fight one of the actual aspects in probably what could have been his full power with all the time changing and all that also if you were a dps you loved this raid or this dungeon because you get your cooldowns all the time and you get to just destroy this boss um along with the end time dungeon i'm just going to give a quick honorable mention to well of eternity because you get to see in a more first hand in a more graphically pleasing um, explosion of the, of the Well of Eternity. And we get to see Manoroth and Illidan and Tyrande and Malfurion all fight him. And it, it was cool. It was different. It was something that I kind of wanted to see because I didn't play through all of the Warcraft 3 series at the time. I hadn't played through them yet. So I didn't really see how it all happened. I knew the story, but I didn't know how it happened. This was one of my favorite dungeons worth running in Cataclysm. I really enjoyed it. 
So number three, we go back in Tempted Vanilla, when Strathholm was out and was a huge dungeon that we all ran through. Um, it was a very long dungeon, but it was awesome in the way that we get to see Strathholm after Arthas had cleansed it or purged it, as he said. This was kind of an important place. This is where Arthas turned and everybody kind of backed away from him because they thought he was a little little radical to go in and purge the entire city. And we can see the aftermath and we can see everything's on fire. People are, you know, just zombies all over the place. There's a whole bunch of necromancers. There's necropolis is all over the inside. You know, the army's dead. The, it's, it's just like really interesting when you've seen the gameplay or you've played the part where you, you play as as Arthas and get you know and try to kill Malganus that the fact that we get to see what we did in Warcraft 3 the aftermath is absolutely incredible I thought it was super cool even the entrance is like you can see sort of where Arthas had said his you know the line where he was you know what I'm gonna go in and purge the city and Jaina turned on him and Uther turned on him and they just, they left them. Strathholm is just has a lot of nostalgia for a lot of people. And not only, cause, not only for the dungeon part of it, but for the fact that it's such a big story location. It helps to bring back that, that vision, kind of exactly what we, exactly what Strathholm looks like firsthand. Number two is from Warlords of Draenor. <clears throat> and it's going to be Auchindoon. Now... I was absolutely baffled when I first did Auchindoon. I walked in there and I was like, holy shit, this is this is it, this is Auchindoon. And this is the same dungeon, the same place that's in the Tariqa Forest in Outlands. That's all destroyed and decrepit and looks nothing, nowhere near like this. It's all destroyed and missing and all fucked up. And here we have this beautiful, pristine Auchindoon that holds back all of the Draenei secrets and it's super super cool what a beautiful gorgeous dungeon blizzard did an amazing job although wad wasn't that great of an expansion we got some beautiful art and akindun definitely goes to show what the team can do fighting terran gore who would eventually become gore fiend and seeing his lust for power and how he just immediately drops after like he doesn't even let you kill him he just jumps off the edge and he's like you know what i'm gonna just i'm gonna eat more people and he just jumps off the edge and then we find him we fight him later in hellfire citadel but the fact that we see, we actually get to fight him, try to stop him. You know, we get to see the corruption that happened within the Akindun. It's it's fantastic. It's an amazing dungeon. I really enjoy it. And for my number one, we're going to go to Rathalich King into the Halls of Reflection. Now, the Halls of Reflection was very strange to me at first because I was much younger at the time. And I didn't really know so much what was going on with Sylvanas. I mean, I played Horde. So I think for Alliance, it was Jaina. For us, it was Sylvanas. And she was trying to obtain, if I can remember correctly, obtain Frostmourne, and right as we do so, the Lich King comes in and they chase off into another room and they leave us to fight these two, you know, Death Knight looking guys, and you know, we kill them, it's no big deal. And we go into the next room and we see Sylvanas uh, fighting the Lich King, and she's trying really, really hard, and her health is much lower than the Lich King's at this time, she stuns him, and with that stun, we use it as an escape because she's outmatched, she can't win. So as we run out, the Lich King frees himself, and we're basically on this chase where Sylvanas needs to break down the ice walls, and the Lich King is like right on her ass. And he has a freaking humongous aura, Remorseless Winter, which will literally annihilate you if you get anywhere near it. The really cool part is that Death Knight's got this move later on at level 100. We get to see them use Remorseless Winter, and it's, it's kind of cool how we get to use an ability that's from the Lich King himself. The cool part is just, you know, getting all the way up to the gunship and then, you know, we shoot at him and try to cave him in, like, show how powerful the Lich King actually was. That Sylvanas, at this point, couldn't even touch him before she was much more capable of killing him. In fact, she stuns him to try to torture him originally, and now she's just outmatched. She just can't win. We, she needs all of us to push together to kill him. So instead of actually fighting, we run away, which is, of course, the much smarter decision to make. And those are my top six favorite dungeons from each of the expansions. Um, I had a lot of fun making this video. Uh, it was a little bit last minute because I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do for this week. But, you know, Draenor Dungeon Event, having to run Mythics just kind of got me in the dungeon mood. Um, 
Hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Go ahead and like, subscribe, uh, leave me a comment. I would love to hear your guys' opinion, but specifically each expansion. Like, don't just tell me your favorite dungeon. Go ahead and tell me your favorite dungeon from vanilla and your favorite dungeon from BC, because I would like to talk about it. Um, a lot of my decisions here were very close. I had very close matches with other dungeons, and I wasn't sure which ones to pick, so I kind of just went with the ones that I felt had more nostalgia and more of a, of a history, opposed to the ones that were just pure fun. So go ahead, let me know what you like, let me know what your favorite was, and I will see you guys on the next video. Take it easy, have a good one.